What's up guys, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at DaVinci Resolve 17's new HDR color tab. Now if you haven't done so, go ahead and back up your projects or your database from your previous current, I mean DaVinci Resolve, because sometimes with new releases, it jacks up your projects. So you've been warned, before you download and install, back up your database somewhere in your desktop or somewhere before you install the new one, because it might jack it up. Okay, so with that being said, DaVinci Resolve was upgraded today to 17, and I gotta say, this is probably the biggest one they've done in a while, and, you know, I don't really make a lot of videos about DaVinci Resolve anymore. I used to, you know, when it first started seven years ago, but uh, this is really exciting for me, because A, you all know I've been trying to do HDR for the longest time, since like, you know, since like a couple of years ago, I've been wanting to get into HDR because it's the future, right? But unfortunately... It was really expensive, but now I managed to get a uh, HDR monitor that is actually working okay. So I'm excited because now with this release, they added the HDR control, which is right here. Now, if you go right here, this is the regular, which is upgraded as well. If you know, if you're familiar with it, it looks different. But right here is the HDR tab, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at right now. Just kind of see what these knobs do, because before, the only thing HDR was this. You know, so now you have all these goodies here, and what we're going to do is just explore to see, mess around, and see what it does to the image. Now, I have a scope right here, and I'm also going to record a uh, video shooting the monitor so you can actually see it, because as you can see right here, it's flat, but in my HDR monitor, it's not, okay? So that's why it's really important that you have a proper 1000 nits minimum HDR monitor, 10-bit. Okay, so we have the monitor on, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the camera. It's the Canon R5. Now, the color might not look right because I am shooting a camera towards the screen, but you can at least see the brightness difference, okay? All right, so I got a screen capture in the Vinci Resolve, and I do have a video showing you what I'm seeing in the monitor. Okay, so right off the bat, you're going to see the scopes changing here. It's going to go up to 10,000 nits, 1,000 nits, 100, 10, and 1. And that's actually what's great about HDR because cameras nowadays can record more latitude than 1024, than regular SDR. So if you look at it again, if I change it to 10-bit, it's right there. But whenever I change it to HDR, actually you see that it extends it. So now we can play around with the brightness. And that's why HDR, I think, is going to be the future as long as, you know, screens and TVs can catch up with it. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and check out our settings to color management. Now, this is using Legacy, but there's a lot of new ones in here. They changed it. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it as is because this is the one that I had before. I don't want to mess it out. Uh, HDR mastering is a thousand nits. And every time I upload an HDR video, I always tell people it's probably going to look bright or different unless you have a thousand nits monitor. Because if you can see here a thousand nits and you're watching it in a 300 nits monitor or device, you're actually not seeing the rest of this right here. So in a way, that's how it works. It's gonna look like crap if you're watching it on a phone that's not even a HDR and the nits is just not bright enough. That's just that. Make sure if I'm mastering it at 1000 nits, you gotta at least watch it at thousand nits or even more, right? So. Uh, yeah, so that's that and right here with the lookup tables. They changed this they shrunk it a little bit But I'm not gonna go over too much of that uh, We're not gonna do double vision because we're only doing HDR 2020 uh, rec 2020 ST 2084 So let's go ahead and go to the HDR tab You can go click this here and it's gonna change the different settings So we're gonna keep going to shadow now the shadow the way this is moving here this is comparable to how i do log adjustment now it might not be true but to me it feels like that's how the control is it's very specific to the shadows and that's so important in hdr because basically if you have hdr footage you're actually allocating all of those different parts of the image so having this precise movement here using this control is a tremendous help all right so i'm going to go ahead and reset that and you're going to see again 
this is the light area it's doing the same thing you see how that the shadow is now pinned and you're only adjusting the lighter portion again very important when it comes to HDR and now highlights as well even going up higher you can only change the highlights and what's cool about this is they actually let you decide where you want these to be in the histogram which is insane even more control of your footage so if I go to blacks and I want to move that left and right I can if I want to so you're technically rearranging these the parts of the images and you're controlling it so precise nowadays that's really crazy compared to the standard log wheels that you used to have you know this is what I used uh, before DaVinci Resolve 17 when I wanted to do precise uh, controls and stuff like that and precise movements but now you have this HDR and you have all of these crazy controls now global is gonna move it up and down and you can see that all right so that's that if I go to the right of that we have more okay it's the same thing so you can see all right it's just insane and this is just a highlight and you can also change the X and Y's of this if you really want because one of the things that's really hard right now with HDR is A, I'm actually still guessing on what the footage is going to look like because my monitor is still not up to par because legit HDR monitors cost $40,000. That's the good ones. You know what I'm saying? So the one I got is not that good. So I'm still having to guess a lot and one of them is color. There's a lot of color shifts whenever I'm color correcting and exporting HDRs and that's really difficult. I'm having to export it, watch it, and then figure out what's going on with the color. And as you can see here, it's pretty much the same thing here. All right, so that's that. And I'm gonna go right here. So as you go shadow, light, then global, specular. So you can actually go all the way from the shadow only. It's pretty much working top, I mean bottom to top or top to bottom, which is really cool. All right, so that's awesome. So what we'll do right now is, and you also have temperature changes here, which is nice. I'm going to zero that out. And I'm going to do tint as well right here. And then you contrast. And then you can also pivot here if you want to do a specific, you know, like portion that you want to move instead. It's crazy. This is nuts. There's so much control in this version. This is pretty insane. All right, so with that being said, HDR, you know, just a little bit background here, and I'm going to do more videos about this. Um, let's take a look at the highlight recovery. So you can see right there, this camera is the Ursa Mini Pro 12K, and as you can see here, like I said, the camera is recording more latitude than standard definition, okay? And that's why HDR is insane. And even Dolby Vision one day, when you can get Dolby Vision in your television at 10,000 nits brightness, then good oh my god that that's gonna be insane all right so as you can see here i uh, did some highlight recovery and um i got some back there so that's nice and yeah they got rid of the pages here it looks like so if i go right here there's no pages here as well and i don't know if this is gonna work but yeah so that works it's moving it as a whole same thing here so you probably don't you can use that as well if you want in conjunction but if you want precise movements on the HDR, then you're gonna have to do this. What I typically do is, let's see if I can drop down the exposure here. And you see this building here on the top left corner. That's obviously clipped, because she was in the shadow, she was under the tree. Um, so, I don't even know if I can recover that. So, drop the brightness just to see. Yeah, I mean, I recover some of it, but not everything. But that's kind of cool. So let me go ahead and zero this out. And what I'm going to do is let's see if we can just fix something. Just do something here. Let's see if we can bring this down a little bit up here. All right. And as you can see right there, it brought down that little building right there on the top left corner, which is insane. Uh, but if we go, I'm going to reset this. And I'm just playing around here, guys. Just kind of showing you here. If we go to the specular, I wonder if that would even concentrate it more. It does. All right. So as you can see, I am just bringing down the top portion, squeezing those pixels and that latitude back into a thousand nits. 
Okay, because right now, as far as I know, that's the highest nits HDR television that I, I mean, that's the one I have. So it wouldn't make sense for me to crank it all the way up to, you know, to like 10,000 one day maybe. But right now, it's cool because I can bring this down to 1,000, which is still clipping. That's still actually clipping there. Uh, the safe spot for me is around 797. So it's right there that I just brought that down. And then I'm going to go back to my light and then drag this, just looking by eye. You know, drag it down. And then if I even want the shadow lower, then I would drag it down even lower. And I'm looking at my screen here. She is a little bit dark. So I'm going to go bring up the lights again. Um, what the heck is this, Microsoft? Trash. Anyways, so high dynamic range, similar to photography, is you're trying to get all that latitude back and show it, right? So that's what we're doing. We're actually... It's not just about saturation. To me, it's more, uh, to me, latitude is more important, you know, try to get those details back. So I'm just going to do a quick specular. I'm going to grab that as much as I can. And I'm going to grab this, squeeze it in there. But this is ridiculous on how much control you got back. And as you can see there, you're pretty much recalculating the um, the plots of where these exposures are, and as you can see, if you didn't have a if you don't have an HDR monitor, this is what you're going to be looking at compared to what you're seeing in the actual uh, recording from the R5. So if I go before and after, just look at that. That's insane. I mean, if I can play through this, I'm going to play through it. Right here, watch this pylon right here. Okay? Look at that. I still clipped it, I think, because she was in the shadow and the sun was blasting on that pylon. But this is HDR video. All right? Just being able to bring everything back and squeezing it back to a thousand nits from this to that that's insane so that's pretty much just a little overview on the new hdr controls in davinci resolve 17 really quick i mean i just downloaded this and it's still in public beta and i that was my first time actually just messing around with it so i got to do a lot more research but it is a lot better than the Vinci Resolve 16, just because it gives you so much control in the actual program itself. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on the new DaVinci Resolve 17 because there's actually a lot to talk about and a lot of stuff that I'm really excited about.